Hi everyone and welcome back to my studio. Spring seems to be arriving and today I noticed we had an absolutely lovely spring-like sky outside the studio so I felt quite inspired to have a go at painting a sky for you today. So let's get started. I'm going to use the traditional method of painting cloudy skies in traditional watercolour that I was taught years ago and all the materials that I'm going to use will be in the description below. So I have wet my piece of paper with a generous amount of water. Not so wet as to be soaking wet, but uh, just enough to make it damp and I'm waiting for the shine to go off. And now I'm going to, this is a, a rough and ready um, cloud scene. I'm painting a sky and if the sky turns out right, then I can add a landscape to it underneath. Now, the way that um, I was taught to paint skies is, as I said, to wet the paper first and then you need to start with a neutral colour like um, this is yellow ochre or you could use Naples yellow um, and probably if you wanted a very dramatic sky you could probably use other colours too um, but the idea here is that you're going to use um, a very dilute wash of yellow to just define the slightly more shadowy areas of the clouds. So let's drop some in here and down here and then slightly smaller areas along nearer to the horizon. This is a, a hake brush, Ron Ranson hake, very old as you can see, the bristles are tired and it's possible that some of you people from England might have one of these brushes. They were quite popular a few years ago and I've just softened some of the edges of that there to, uh, because that's what you do. Now, um, I'm narrating this as I'm going along, which isn't easy. And Ron Ranson says in one of his books about painting skies that when he did the sky, that was the one time during the tuition sessions in his courses when he stopped talking to concentrate on the sky. Because even with all the experience that he had had, which was many and varied, he still knew himself that uh, it could all go badly wrong very easily. Now I'm going to come in with some blue and here I've got a mixture of ultramarine and a little bit of phthalo in it as well and I'm going to just drop in some shapes of clouds, of sky sorry, just above there. And something that you want to avoid really is hard lines because I know that sometimes you see skies that have got apparently hard-lined clouds. It's true, but it never really looks quite real if you try to paint them like that. So I'm going in with my um, old brush and I'm just softening up the lines where the paint meets the paper. And then I'm going to carry on the blue a little bit further down here. And maybe we drop some in over here. And now the shadows underneath the clouds you can make using alizarin crimson which I've mixed some up here. Mix that with some of your blue 
to make a violet colour and maybe tone it down a bit with black, depends on what kind of mood you want to uh, develop. So I've mixed up a, a bit of a grey kind of thing and I'm just going to drop that in. Okay, I've got my paper at uh, about 30, no, more like 20 degree angle there, so that the paint tends to run down. And the thing is, you never know what's going to happen. You never know whether you're going to create a pretty effect or an ugly effect until it has done its thing. So, I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, but I'm going to paint in a little bit of land underneath using a soft green. Okay, so we'll just let that dry and see how it turns out. So this is what it looks like now that it's dry and I think that possibly it needs a bit more intensity. So because it's completely dry, it's absolutely bone dry, I can now go in, this is another technique, I can go in and wet the whole thing again and the paint won't move underneath as long as I don't rub too hard. So I'm just gently applying more water, clean water. And I'm going to try to intensify the colours. I feel like I've left too much of a gap here at the top and there should be some some blue in there. Um, because I'm not working from a reference photo it's not entirely uh, straightforward what to do next but um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to use a different brush I'm thinking to make, to force myself to be loose, the bigger the brush I can use, the better. So let's see, I've got cobalt blue here and I'm going to go over what I'd already done with this brush. and try to slightly intensify. The blue. And here, same thing. A few um, crisp 
cloud lines, just a few. And then I need some, bring in some red into the blue. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to leave that to dry again and I'm going to call that a day and we'll come back and have another look at it when it's dry. So the sky has dried and looking at this I decided that the bottom area here was pretty much um, uninteresting whereas the top part of the sky up here is quite nice. So I thought I would put in a landscape, turn this into a little uh, bay. We have the horizon line here and this is a, a piece of land jutting out. This is a nearby uh, rock that comes down onto a little rough beach here with some grass on it. We have grassy beaches here in Brittany and then we've got an inlet of water, a sort of bay here and a little bit of sand here and some more grass down here and uh, maybe we might put a little boat in somewhere around about here maybe two boats perhaps Okay, and then maybe we'll put some birds in the sky. So now I'm going to have a, a go at painting that. I'm going to keep the colours very muted and stick with what we've already got sort of thing. So um, in the distance we're going to have greyish tones. So we'll just drop in some various and assorted shades here. Some greens and some mauves for the distance. Sort of brownish. The fun thing about painting in watercolour is that you can just, you know, um, make it up as you go along, really. That's the thing. You know, I don't know how, how old you are, but once you've seen a few places, you can pretty much, you know, Come up with something that looks remotely like a landscape just from imagination you don't really need photos in front of you all the time and 
Over here I'm going to scrape the side of the brush down the page to give a rough, uh, what do they call that, dry brush effect. To indicate the ground. Got some just by accident sort of light areas there which we'll leave because that kind of looks like water a little bit there. And then um, over the other side let's lighten it up a bit with a sort of sludgy yellowish tone the idea of sand I started this out intending it to be a, a warm-up, but it kind of got away from me a little bit. Put a bit of something brownish in here. And now looking at the background, that needs to have some darker areas as well, perhaps a bit more mauve. I don't know whether it's my imagination, but I do think that it seems to me that the new paints that I've been buying just recently, bearing in mind that my old paints are at least a decade old, they seem to be drying back more light, lighter than the, uh, the new ones seem to be drying back more light than the old ones. I'm just putting some very light grey in there to indicate the water. And I think I'll put the boats in using my watercolour pencil. wet that and then I'll put the masts in afterwards and maybe some of the darks can be enhanced a bit with this pencil which is good for doing sharpening up the shadows And then you can go in with your brush afterwards. Let's soften that down a little bit. And let that dry. And as usual, I need the, feel the urge for a bit of spatter.
and over the other side as well. Bit of green. And then a little bit of calligraphy or whatever. No, we don't need anything else. Okay, that's done. We'll let that dry. So there's the final painting with the sky that we started off with and the landscape that grew out of it. I hope you enjoyed watching me do that today and that it gives you some ideas for doing your own next sky for your next landscape painting. If you did enjoy it, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and perhaps subscribing if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, that would be wonderful. It really does help. So thanks again for being here and I look forward to seeing you here again next time when we come back with our next painting. So thanks again and I'll just say bye for now. Bye everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>